With smartphones everywhere, in every pocket, is it possible to escape selfies? Everybody gets roped in, it turns out. What does it mean for the rest of us? The president does it, Pope Francis does it. Well, now, some researchers are calling this a disease, selfitis. A few people report being helplessly addicted to taking photos of themselves, so they snap hundreds of selfies every single day and are simply unable to stop. Is there more disgusting illnesses uh, in the world? Probably not. Nell Daly is a psychotherapist, and she joins us tonight. Nell, I mean, I, yeah. I think it degrades science a little bit to call this an illness when it's really just self-involvement of a kind that we're familiar with, but it's reached a greater magnitude. You know, you know, I know that that's the gut reaction and I can see why you would say that, but I think that there's a big difference between thinking that someone is narcissistic and they post selfies all the time because they're suffering from some element of narcissism and actual addiction. And so when you have what's cited in this study was a bunch of young women who are constantly taking selfies of each other, you have to understand that these devices are super addictive. And I don't necessarily right. think, and it hasn't been proven, that it comes from a place of necessary, necessarily from a narcissistic place. Really? So yeah. if you're taking, if you find your own face the most interesting image in the world, that's not self-involvement? <laughs> because I, it seems I, like I, it to me. I know, I know. But actually, think about it, Tucker. Wouldn't you think that if that's how you're spending your time and it's impairing your daily function, that it's actually coming from a place of really maybe perhaps low self-esteem? And so we're flooded all the time. These devices, you have to understand, Instagram and Facebook, all these social media platforms right. are built to be really addictive. And you can't I've talk noticed. to any marketing or PR agency that doesn't say, if you're trying to build a brand or a business, that you you shouldn't post pictures of yourself. So that's the message that we're sending constantly. You also have to realize that the greatest population on Instagram, for example, are young women between the ages of 18 and 25. And what they look at the most is makeup and fashion. We're attracted to people's faces. That's a big difference. That's a kind of a, a little bit of a different conversation than necessarily talking about young women or people who are super addicted to taking selfies. Unfortunately, selfies make money. If you look at Instagram, Instagram at all, you'll see that there's tons of people making a lot of money by posting videos of themselves, for example, putting well, on noticed. makeup or doing, or doing, you know, different kinds of exercises and showing people well, how to do that. Well, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. So the feminist line on this, which is dumb and wrong as usual, but dumber and wronger in this than in most, says men are the cause of women's low self-esteem, young women especially. But it sounds like these tech companies are really adding to the sum total of unhappiness for young women, and no one ever calls them out on that. Why is that? Well, I, I, the first part of your comment, I'm not necessarily sure I agree with, because I don't think all feminists believe that it's just men who are causing women to have low self-esteem. <laughs> the do... ones who come on TV say that. Okay, well, I'm a feminist, and I don't say that. But here's the thing. It's... it's um, it, it's really important to recognize that these devices, and I agree with you that Facebook and Instagram need to have sort of a, a bigger ethical responsibility to create yeah. platforms that don't necessarily push people always having to post their face on the platforms and be super addictive. I agree. Yeah.